you know, December always reminds me of my mother because this is the time of year that she died. And I had a very complicated, all the songs on the playlist actually have like the word mama in them or mother or something in case you noticed. Um, but uh, all, uh, we had a very complicated relationship. And uh, growing up, I, I used to think that she was a witch because she had this thick black hair and she would wear bright red lipstick and she had high cheekbones and she was super thin and it seemed like she could make anyone do anything she wanted, especially my father. <laughs> and um, I was like her pale imitation, you know? I had like a fair skin, she was Italian, you know, she was just gorgeous and I have blonde hair and uh, I, I, I just, you know, I just, I always wanted to be at her club. Uh, and I was really not welcome in her club. Uh, her club seemed to be her and my sister. Um, the other thing was that my parents, they stayed married. They were married for I, many years, many years, like almost 50 years when she died. And I, I thought when I started dating that I had somehow missed something about relationships because what I learned was that uh, you should date someone that you really hated, so you can really have some good arguments with them sometimes. Um, that didn't work out very well. Uh, naturally, I started writing a dating column. Uh, that's the God's honest truth. Because I started reading all these self-help books about relationships. I was obsessed. I was like, OK, clearly I have this wrong. I'm like, commitment phobia, uh, what men want. Or, I don't know. There are so many, so many books out there. And I was reading them all, so I, I always had lots of advice for everybody else. Uh, meanwhile, you know, not the first husband situation. But, um, you know, I, what I was starting to do, too, was it seemed like people would be, love to give me things, and they would send me little things. I remember this one. It was uh, this woman, she um, had compiled what kids said about love is. Like, love is when you finish each other's sentences. I'm like, step back. Those are my lines. <laughs> and love is, um, you know, when, when you look at someone and stars come out of your eyes. I mean, right? I just didn't feel like I was really making any progress with these things. Um, and, but, but I, and I, did, I did get married. And um, so I felt like, oh, phew, I figured it out. But of course, I still had this idea that love meant, you know, learning how to really tolerate the person you hated the most on the planet, because that's who you were going to end up with anyway, right? That seemed to be what worked the magic in my parents' relationship. And um, uh, uh, he ended up ending our marriage over the telephone from another country. Uh, so that didn't work out so well. And um, I moved back into my parents' house. I felt like I was just like spit out, cast ashore on the rocks of my parents still working somehow marriage they not only stayed married they actually owned a business together they owned a health club and now my mother at the health club this is her this is a cigarette <laughs> your father knew i didn't like to exercise when he met me <laughs> welcome to holiday health and Club. can i help you <laughs> But they, I, I, I was like, what is going on here? And, you know, I, I, um, I ended up moving to New York City where uh, that was, again, trial by fire. Oh, my God. I, I did online dating there, which was crazy. I met so many wackadoo people, had so many experiences. I, I, I hung out with the polyamorists because I thought, okay, like, what me? I am going to figure out how this works. I'm going to I'm gonna study the mating behavior of these people, completely ignoring the fact that I'm kind of a serial monogamist. That didn't work out so well either. Um, you know, and and, and I just, I really wasn't having any luck. Also, at the same time, I kept going back and forth to India. I was constantly like, okay, I'm going to go. It wasn't exactly eat, pray, love, because I knew that the answer wasn't going to be a fucking relationship. I couldn't go from a failed relationship to a perfect one. I needed to get right with myself. And I kept going back and forth to India. And I was looking and looking. And I would go to these spiritual festivals. I went to Osho. Did, you, did any of you guys see that Netflix documentary yeah, about yeah. Osho, speaking yeah. of cults? <laughs> I went to another cult, wild Balance View, Wild Country, thank you. I went to another cult, which is where I, I kind of got the insight. Like, I see people lining up for $4 vegan cappuccinos, <laughs> and I realize uh, this is ridiculous. I'm in the wrong place. I mean, I liked, I actually liked what this, the, 
the message this cult had to say, which is basically regard all incoming experiences as data and just allow the data to wash through you. <laughs> I know, I know, it sounds weird, but it was working for me at the time a hell of a lot better than everything that happened it was like a, a, a something that was incriminating me in some way. So, you know, data, data, fine, fine. Uh, and I'm, uh, I actually start dating some people in real life back in New York City, and it's very exciting. And then, um, and then my mom's cancer came back. I didn't mention the cancer before. That would have been helpful. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter though, because cancer is cancer, right? Yeah. You get cancer, and if it keeps coming back, it's bad news. And it was bad news. And so, I just left New York City. I, I mean, I didn't tell anybody I was leaving. I didn't have any kind of a goodbye party. It was just like, I, I gotta go home. And I told these guys that I was dating, I wasn't dating anybody seriously. I was like, oh, I've gotta go and you know, whatever. And there's nothing like the process of um, losing your uh, mother to help you get rid of things that are not necessary. So those guys went by the wayside. And you know, I started to really notice my family and how we function or don't function that well together. <laughs> We're so different. Um, we, we can recall the same thing that happened, and to me it was like the most fun, and to my sister it was the worst day ever. We even have photographic evidence of this, though, because there are all these pictures of me, and I'm like, hey, and she's like, hey. And um, my dad is just completely out to lunch. So my mom is in hospice. My sister is posting these chirpy things on Facebook, like, mom's doing great. I'm like, she's in hospice. We're at the end. And my dad, he's not spending less and less time in the room with her. And the night that she died, she, I, I, I know that she waited for my dad and my sister to go home. And um, my sister uh, uh, had just started a new job. She couldn't be there. My dad, obsessed with a health club, he had to be there. And um, he had been telling the nurses that he was gonna get her on a vegan diet in order to, and I just thought, well, that'll kill her. <laughs> and um, I was sitting in the room and I was telling this hospice nurse all these stories about my mother because, like I said, I, I wanted nothing more than to be in her club. And then the moment came and my dog Hartley was with me and he jumped up on her bed and we looked at each other and stars came out of her eyes. Wow. Thank you. We're going to take a break now.